you had to be extremely careful when you were up high because a gust could come along and literally blow you right off. The old tradition was that you lose one life for every million dollars on a bridge project. And this was a $35 million bridge, more or less, so we should have lost 35 guys during the building. Whether out of genuine concern or concern for his image, Strauss proudly imposed one safety rule after another. He was probably the first to use the hard hats. They were leather, half football helmet, half hard hat in that day. They had to wear safety lines. They were, always had been safety lines, but a lot of guys wouldn't wear them. Well, in the Golden Gate Bridge, if you didn't wear one, you were fired. I worked with a guy named Ed Walker, and he was a rotten, no-good SOB, and his spit bounced, and he would uh, fight anybody, and uh, he was a tremendous iron worker. He stopped all the time, and Strauss fired him because he wouldn't use a safety belt. Strauss told him, uh, tie off there, and he told him, go screw himself, and so Strauss had him fired right then. On May 20th, 1936, workers adorned the spinning wheel with flags, and sent it across the gate one last time, pulling the very last wire behind it. The cables had been finished ahead of schedule, at a rate four times faster than had been considered possible. The following month, Joseph Strauss made a rare public pronouncement. He revealed that he had ordered the most expensive, elaborate safety device ever conceived for a major construction site. He was spending over $130,000 on a safety net to be installed as work began on the bridge's roadbed. What he did was to put this wonderful safety net under the entire bridge so that people who fell would be saved. And he cantilevered it out, 10 feet out on each side from the workspace, so that he protected everybody. No matter how high up you were, and how hard you might have been blown off, you would still fall into the net. Nineteen men tumbled into the net, each cheating death. They called themselves the Halfway to Hell Club. The net became a morale booster, so much that workers had to be ordered not to jump into it on purpose. For Strauss, the investment paid dividends. The loss of life, the delays that would occur from men working slower because they had to be a bit more careful so they wouldn't fall, probably made the $130,000 a very economic innovation. 